Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first edition of Coffee Break in 2021. My name is Steve Barrett. I'm the Editorial Director of PR Week. Really delighted to welcome Barbie Siegel to the show, CEO of Zeno. Barbie, terrific to have you on as our first guest of 2021 and a, a very exciting time to be talking. Thank you, Steve. Happy New Year. I'm really honored to be your very first guest of 2021. Yeah, so look, what, I mean, it's difficult to make predictions because if we sat here a year ago and made some predictions, I'm pretty sure we wouldn't have predicted uh, what was going to happen in the next 12 months. We probably know a little bit more at this time. How are you feeling moving into a new year? You've, you've had nine months of lockdown like the rest of the industry. Um, you've dealt with those challenges. The agency seems to be doing pretty well considering. Talk us uh, through how you're feeling moving into 21 and what are the big things at the top of your agenda? Thanks, Steve. Look, we're feeling cautiously optimistic. We had a, uh, we're of course on a fiscal year. So we had a very strong fiscal 20, which ended in June, 18% growth. And we've just completed the first half of our new fiscal. So we are back to uh, pre-pandemic revenue levels and then some. And we think our second half will be even 10% above that. So we're hopeful. I mean, I think what the last 10 months have shown us, something we've always known, is the role and importance of communications and the impact that we all can have. And what has been incredibly fascinating to all of us and what I'm looking forward to is the work that we get to do with our clients, with companies, tech, health, consumer, not only to impact their business selling more product, but the impact that they are making in the world and helping them with their employees and making sure that their businesses are standing up to be more than what they do. So, you know, many, many years ago, we talked about the role of communications and that day has, has really come and that is exciting. Unfortunately, it's happened at a very difficult time for us. Yeah, it's true. I think that leadership in this period has been defined by communication, good or bad, you know, and that never have organizations and businesses needed more, more good communication at the top and good communications advice. But obviously, we suffered a horrific recession. We saw hundreds of thousands of job losses. We saw people suffering from the pandemic, horrific health outcomes. How have you managed to retain growth in that time? Is that through doing a lot of healthcare work, doing more more demand for crisis or employee engagement. Talk us through what's what's kept you in, in, in double digit growth. I mean, I think it's a few things. One, it's um, growing existing clients with a array of specialist capabilities that are stronger and deeper than ever, whether it's data and analytics, purpose, creative, tech, health, really working with our clients in many different areas, bringing them that full integrated uh, solution, if you will. So that's growing existing clients. Uh, there's you been a pretty- find, You didn't uh, find them cutting back their budgets then? Well, in the beginning, Steve, they did. You know, March and April, those were scary months. None of us knew what was going to happen. And there were some, some cutbacks, um, some clients paused. But then, you know, as we came into the end of the summer and the fall, business returned. I think companies like all of us figured out how to operate in this new world. And as you said, communications was not a place to cut. So we saw our business really benefit from that in many ways. And, yeah. and I think for a lot of us, it's all the work that we've done over the past few years in terms of. Uh, understanding the role that communications can play, all that set us up very well for what was to come. I thought it was really interesting this year to see the shortlist for the PR Week Awards um, in the large agency category, which you are now in, and you're actually competing for that title with Edelman, which is your sort of big brother, if you like, or you know, you're part of the same holding company, Daniel, Daniel J. Edelman. So how does that feel, first of all? Um, and also, what does it say about the growth of Zeno and your sort of progress towards the targets that I remember Richard Edelman saying that you wanted Zeno to be a 100 million plus agency? Well, you're well on the way toward doing that now. So um, 
we refer to Edelman as our sister agency. And of course, Steve, we're honored to be shortlisted in the large agency category with, you know, such wonderful agencies like Edelman. I think what we have realized is the dream that Dan Edelman had, which was to have two substantial agencies as part of DJE Holdings. And so, you know, I'm, I'm very proud of what we've accomplished and the way we've been able to scale the business. I mean, several years ago, Richard said we should be a $100 million business. And as you say, we are very close to achieving that, which means we really are an agency of scale. I think even though we were in the large agency category, we still consider ourselves mid-size because our size compared to an Edelman, there's a difference. But, you know, back to why we've been able to grow. I mean, we have, you know, world-class clients, big capabilities. And I just have to say the talent we've been able to attract has enabled us to achieve this, uh, you know, this success. Um, and so it's a thrill to be in that company. Yeah, no, it's certainly very noteworthy. Talk to us about you talked about talent and obviously the impact on it's a people business, the impact on your people and on your clients and the way everybody's been working. How did you approach that from a sort of employee engagement and a leadership point of view? Because, uh, you know, it's been tough times, hasn't it? And I think everybody's really felt that, that getting a few days off certainly over the holidays was was much needed. And people have really been putting it going, going beyond to, uh, you know, there's been no slacking on the job, has there? How have you handled that at Zeno? Look, I think in March and April and May and June, there were, there were dark days. Um, our uh, parents with young children were facing homeschooling, um, people having to work from home, missing being in the office, and just generally being scared about what was going on in the world. So. We did a few things, like like many other agencies. Of course, we doubled down on making sure all of our people had the support they needed, uh, extra services, making counseling available, doing all the activities. Um, we started as a North American leadership team having a daily meeting. We began that on March 12th. It continues to this day. And the main purpose of that meeting was to make sure people were okay. Um, so that was one thing. We, uh, of course, gave people extra time off and complete flexibility to work in the way that they could while taking care of the home front. And at the same time, we told people to shut their cameras, to take the time off that they needed. Um, I also began something that you might be interested in on around March 12th. I committed to write a daily email every single night to the global agency. Of course, I had no idea how long this was going to last. And on December 16th, I wrote my 99th email. And on Thursday, I will write my 100th email. I now do it weekly. But it was cathartic for me. And it was a great way to connect with people and just share our hopes and our fears. Some nights, it was a piece of music I shared. Some nights, it was a poem. Others, it was something that I was feeling personally because none of us were exempt from being anxious and scared. And while we are in a new year, 2021, I think some of the anxiety remains. We're still in uncertain times. We're still all working from home. So we've always put our people first, but it's never been more important to begin conversations with how are you doing and to actually pause and listen to the person, not have it be um, perfunctory. And yes, our, we have all worked really hard to be there for our clients and our clients have been, been great partners. I think we just have to keep pacing ourselves. How do you see that playing out in 21? Because we're, we're going to be working from home for a little while yet, I think for sure. The vaccines will roll out, although that, as we've seen, there's already been some hiccups with that. What are your, what's your view on, on how long you're going to be working in lockdown? And what's your view on your hard office environment? I mean, 
when it comes to March 12, 21, I imagine your office will have been pretty much empty or some of your offices will have been empty for a whole year. How do you, as a business leader, approach that and your real estate strategy? I mean, I think we have all seen what is possible through the power of technology. We do want to get back to the office and when it is safe to do so, we will. But I think as has been written, the workplace is probably forever changed or at least changed for quite some time to come in terms of having a hybrid approach. I think a silver lining is showing that it is possible to work in a fast paced career and tend to home life. I mean, eventually the kids will be in school fully and parents won't be homeschooling, but some combination it gives us you know, tremendous flexibility. So I personally am excited to get back on the road, to see our teams, to go visit clients. And we will get there eventually when it's safe to do so. But I'm not certain in the short run, it's gonna be everybody back in the office five days a week, all at one time. We're, we're fortunate that we work in a business where we can have that uh, flexibility. So do you, have you had to make any decisions about physical environments? Have you had to close any offices? Are you looking at that? Are you scaling down space? How are you sort of approaching that part of the business? We, we had some um, uh, temporary workspaces in a few places that we have not renewed for now. But, you know, our main offices are standing and waiting, you know, for us to return. Um, and, and we will one day. Yeah, it's, it's bizarre, isn't it? Look, look, I'm going into Manhattan. I've probably only been in about 10 times in 10 months. And uh, it's it, all these buildings laying empty. It's it's incredible. It really is. It's uh, it's just uh, you, you certainly couldn't have predicted it. Um, and sort of to finish off, you've been doing some work around your own agency purpose. Obviously, purpose is a big part of communications these days and the work you do for clients. But tell us a bit about the work you're doing around Zeno's purpose and when we can expect more on that. Thanks for asking. This has been uh, definitely a highlight uh, of the year for many of us. You know, we were in the trenches with our clients, uh, helping them with their purpose, dealing with a, a, an array of social issues. And while Zeno has always been a purposeful agency, we decided to embark upon the process that we have done for so many clients. And so we have been um, working over the last several months to articulate our own purpose, you know, that is to say why we do what we do, what is the larger impact that we all as individuals and as an agency can have. We know, of course, that, you know, millennials and Gen Z, they all expect more from their workplaces. And so it's been a fascinating um, process. It has involved the entire agency. Everyone has had a chance to to give their thoughts and, you know, on many days it enabled us to really dig deep about who we are today and where we want to go and what we want to be beyond the products and services we sell. So I think we'll be in position to reveal that sometime um, in, in the first quarter. That sounds good. Was there one thing just to finish off that you were particularly surprised by or that came out of that process that was really illuminating for you? I think what was very gratifying is how Zeno people across the world think about Zeno and their what they take away from Zeno and how deeply our culture, our fearless culture has penetrated and the ambition that people have and how do we combine ambition with humanity. And that really led us down, um, you know, a really uh, interesting path. Okay. Well, we look forward to seeing more about that. Congratulations on keeping the numbers, uh, keeping Richard happy with the financial performance, but also keeping your people happy and doing great work over the past 10 months. And great to catch up with you on the first edition of Coffee Break, Barbie. Thank you, Steve. Thanks for having me. And I, I hope this is a safe and peaceful new year for all of us. Yeah, absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Stay well.